Devin Graves coming to you once again from Studio D. And today I want to have my last word, I promise my last word on this whole Ken Tamplin debacle. Okay, the first thing I want to do is actually thank Ken Tamplin and Phil from Wings of Pegasus because this uh, last video I made on the subject was by far my most successful video. And I will admit to you right now that I'm making this video in a follow-up because of that. Yes, I want views. Yes, I want subs. And that last video worked really well. So I'm doing this one again at the risk of being copyright stricken. Now, I want to clear up something. There was a misunderstanding in reading my comments that I was saying that Phil from Wings of Pegasus didn't have proof. That wasn't what I said. What I said was that he had proof and that Ken disputed this without proof. And instead of saying Ken, I said he. And so people thought I was probably talking about Phil, although most people, I think, did understand that. So I just want to get that straight out the gate. I think Phil is amazing. I love his presentation. I love his articulation. I love the way he speaks. I love his personality. And I really enjoy his show. Now, there's a couple of things I left out kind of intentionally on my critique about Ken Tamplin. And the reason why I'm coming on mostly is because a lot of comments I got were saying that I was too kind, almost defending Ken. And maybe there's some truth to that. I'm, I wasn't there to attack him. I was there just to point out uh, my take on what it is that he's doing. And I want to just say conclusively that I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with lip syncing your videos if you have to work hard on getting a great vocal take by punching in and then you want to lip sync that and, you know, for some uh, continuity in the, in the shot. Completely understandable. Um, it's when you state the contrary and you base the contrary on your prowess as a vocal coach. And this is why people are coming up with a word like fraud and liar and things like that. I think that the reason most people are attacking Ken, and including myself in a much more mild version, is that we get really sick and tired of his arrogance. He's very, very conceited. Ken, that is just the truth. You love yourself a little too much. And you proclaim yourself as something super, super great, and you're not supposed to be the one to do that. Other people are supposed to do that for you. You don't need to say it for yourself that you're the greatest singer, the greatest vocal coach, the greatest guitar player, any of these things. You don't need to state that. History will decide. I watched on one of your videos uh, about microphones that's going to come up about your M149 microphone. You mentioned again that you had 40 records out and you said, oh, I got to check. I think that's even more than the Rolling Stones. Great work, man. Great work. More than the Rolling Stones. But the Rolling Stones did more in one song than you did in all your 40 records. So you really need to humble yourself down a little bit. I've been a touring musician for 40 years 35 years. And the one thing that remained constant in my experience is the coolest, oh, the most talented people I've ever come across, either by playing with them uh, at concerts, supporting them, or vice versa, or just stars that I've met. The one thing that the most talented people have in common is humility. They really appreciate these compliments. They don't walk around saying how they're the greatest thing that ever lived. They are humble and they let the rest of the world prop them up. That's how it works, man. And when you work so hard on building yourself up, especially by tearing other people down, I watched as you critiqued a live 
Sebastian Bach a Skid Row concert, and there was a part where he was singing this long sustained note, and you were bagging on him for all the chorus, and I, presumably about the fact that he was singing this long, clear note. And then you bust in with this hey! sort of note that was like, that's how I would do it. Well, for one, you busted in halfway through his note that he had been holding for a long time. And for two, he could have probably sang it like that too, but chose not to stylistically. His voice is different. He chose to sing a certain way stylistically. And just because you can belt it out and put distortion on it doesn't make it better. And that's really the only thing that that people are attacking you over is that they get sick of seeing you attack their heroes, Freddie Mercury, Sebastian Bach, Steve Perry, these other singers that have left such an indelible mark in rock history. And you come along with your vocal coaching saying how much better you would have done it. And it's like, man, let history decide. Don't don't do that. Don't do that because <laughs> it's just conceited and it's actually not true. It's not better. If Steve Perry belted the way you do, I wouldn't have listened to Journey. I love his soft, smooth voice. You have to consider all these things in context that he's going for a Sam Cooke sound. He's not going for a Ronnie James Dio or David Coverdale sound. And that sound he has picked has really been treated him well over over the years, at least over the years of his career. And so by you putting down other singers, other vocal coaches, saying, oh, if they can't do it live, or if they can't do it, then you shouldn't learn from them. Well, I'd agree with that. I'd agree if they can't do it, they can't teach it. But I don't know of any vocal coaches that can't do it. Um, they just sing differently than you do. And again, the style of singing that you're propagating, it's cool. And, you know, 30 years ago, it would have been the bee's knees, you know, it would have been the cat's pajamas. And I would have been all over it because I sing like that too. I sang like that too. I also have a four octave range. I still have it. Um, but, you know, that's like having a 24 fret guitar, you know, there's better music to be made down on the lower frets. You don't have to be screaming up on that 24th fret to prove a point or to make better music. It's not about your range. It's not about your power. It's about your ideas. It's about your communication. It's about how people connect with what you're doing. And on the subject of if the coaches can't do it if they can't demonstrate it. That's where people are calling you out because you proclaim to be demonstrating this stuff live, even in your studio. I'll leave the live concert out of this for now, but I did watch the entire uh, Shout concert from 2024, and there is no question in my mind that portions of that concert, portions of the songs are lip sync. No question. Uh, Phil points out how you have the echo on your pre-produced voice and how there's no echo on the voice you have in the room. Well, it's the same with your video. I said I would leave this out till later, but since I'm here, you guys can watch it for yourself. But what you hear is when the pre-recorded parts, the things that I think are pre-recorded parts that I'm pretty positive are pre-recorded parts, they have that same echo, that same kind of fast delay, almost a slap back delay. And right after that line, you'll do a woo. There's no echo on that. So you definitely have a live mic and you're definitely singing some of that low stuff and the high stuff. Maybe you're singing some of it. It's not easy to, to always tell, but, but from an experienced person like myself, especially the anomalies of microphones, the way that microphone is bouncing off your mouth, you can hear the plosives when you're really singing. And then all of a sudden when the vocal is going high, all those plosives are gone, the mic is even, the mic is clear, and it's not congruent with the way it's bouncing around on your mouth, on his mouth. I'm talking like, I'm talking to Ken, I shouldn't do that, presuming he's going to watch my video. If he does, he's probably going to copyright claim it, because I want to show an example of this lip syncing in the studio that is just clear as day. And there's a point on that video that I also saw in the live concert, where he's singing 
the chorus that has a lot of backing vocals in it and his lead vocal ducks down, but it's not pulled down by a fader. It just is less quiet. And then immediately a line that he'll sing immediately after is all of a sudden up in volume. It, live mixing just doesn't work that way, especially when you claim to have only rehearsed for three days before the show. I don't think you spent three days with the sound man to get all these little moves right. And it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. Part of that live show was lip synced. That's how I, that's what I believe. And I want to show a video where you're talking about singing and playing guitar together. And I'm going to show you why I'm calling you out on that as well. So I want to show a video of him in the studio talking about how great he is at singing, how great he is at playing guitar at the same time. And the video is presumably to, to show this as a fact, but it's clear that he is lip syncing and miming the guitar. It's absolutely clear. I'm going to show you a video of him doing this. And then I'm going to show you a video of what it looks like when somebody actually is singing live in the studio for a video. And I hope you enjoy who I show you. It's somebody very special that hopefully uh, you never heard of. If you have heard of him, you'll like it. And if you haven't heard of him, maybe you'll uh, check him out. But first, let's go to this. This is a song he did. And I want to get to, actually, let's, let's get to this. He wrote here, This is an original song of mine called Holdin' On, since this channel teaches singing and not songwriting, most people won't click on an original song. And the goal is to show how well my singing method stacks up to some of the greatest pieces of music ever recorded. I think this should settle the question of whether or not I can really play the guitar. Smile face. And I think this gives an adequate example of me singing and playing guitar at the same time and particularly something difficult. Okay, so um, we're about to endeavor into some of the greatest uh, singing that compares against the greatest music ever recorded, first of all. Secondly, I wrote, there's more, there's more. Uh, I wrote a comment down here, and I wrote, are you really going to claim this isn't synced, lip synced, or mimed guitar? Just don't. People would understand. Now, I want to see if that comment disappears, because everything else is totally sucking Ken off. Dude, knowing you're a brother in Christ just made my day so awesome. Wow, awesome. Enjoy that. Thanks, man. Where's Gabby? Excellent, Ken. An Axe to Grind is one of my all-time favorite albums in the Christian metal genre. Oh my God, you really remind me of old Jeff Scott Soto from Yngwie Malmsteen. I disagree. Um, you rock that, Ken. More please. You rocked that, Ken. More please. This is what I call virtuoso. I can't even imagine how it is to feel the music coming out. Just seems to be so exciting. So people are under the impression he's pulling this off real time. And that seems to be the aim of his video. And otherwise, I don't know why this microphone is here. But I want to play it, a little bit of it. Okay, first of all, I want to point out that this is terrible mic technique, and Ken certainly knows better. He's not even facing the microphone. And in another video I'm going to refer to later, which I'm going to illustrate my point, is in Ken's room with Ken's voice with that microphone, which he claims can... He, he widens the polar pattern out, but when he's doing that demonstration, he's actually facing the mic. It's a different story when you turn from the mic. You can hear on this mic, you probably hear quite a difference. You know, I don't hear it. Uh, hopefully I'll hear a difference later, but I'll show on his video that, especially in this room, which is reverberant, it's not dead, that once he turns his head, you would hear a bunch of room. But here, the mix is... Perfect. And 
And he's changing these angles, presumably to hide. Oh, wait, did he pull this off live? Let's see if he pulled this off. Superhuman. Right there. Right there. Where you hear the hold on, holding on, and then he sings right after it. The voice jumps in level, but also he kind of missed the cue. Watch. So you hear how the solo vocal is up in level and the lead vocal in the chorus with the harmonies is tucked down. That same thing happens in the live show. It's impossible to do. It's impossible to do without... Uh, it, it's impossible to do. It, okay, maybe not impossible, but highly, highly implausible. Now, we're going to go to his guitar playing. That's very convincing. His right hand gives me a laugh. Like he's choking pretty much across the, all the strings. And that also. That um, string dive it didn't happen in sync with his playing. So, look, it's it's... And it's not a problem. It's not a problem. If he just said, you know, I, I don't know what the point of his video is, if he's proving that he can sing and play guitar. I mean, it looks like he can. It looks like he can. But that's not what he's doing. That's not what you're hearing. At least that's not what you're hearing. Now, if you just pay attention to his mouth a little bit, the way he's facing away from the mic, he's facing away from the microphone, but it says if it's clear as if he was facing the microphone. This is a video called How I Get My Killer Vocal Sounds, new Neumann M149 microphone. Now, I have it queued up to the part where he turns his head similarly to on that video. But it's going to be worth your time for you audiophiles out there that really want to know. Now, um, I want to say one more thing too. Um, right there. The roominess, you hear the, the voice gets less present and the sound of the roominess increases. It's just how microphones work. So listen to the room. Edit, and I'm going to show you that too. So I, you guys ask for it. I'm going to give it to you. I know this is going to be a little longer video, guys, but it's going to be worth your time for you audiophiles out there that really want to know. Now, um, I want to say one more thing too. Um, so look, that's how I would expect the microphone to behave. That's exactly how I would expect it to behave. It's not magic great microphone but it's not magic you actually have to be facing the the microphone yeah you can move left or right you can even move back and forward and the um there might be shifts in sound depending on the microphone especially depending on the room but in this case um turning your head is completely a different thing just like turning your guitar away from a microphone it's going to hear it but it's going to sound different and these are the cues that i just noticed as he he put his mic where he put it for that video, uh, probably just to to get the shot. Because if he had put the mic where it belongs, he should have put the mic on this side. It would have been a lot more convincing. Oh, where was that whammy dive? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so... He's clearly playing the guitar part as if the guitar would be being played. But what we can't hear is if he's playing it cleanly, if he's playing it well. Uh, he's clearly miming that. And he's clearly miming to a pre-recorded vocal. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And the only reason why I point it out is because he claims to the contrary. And the whole premise of this video implies the contrary. He doesn't really say he's doing this live, but he's certainly implying it. Now, I want to show you what it looks like 
when somebody is actually singing live. This is an artist called Puddle's Pity Party, and this guy is a phenomenal singer. I highly recommend you look him up. Right now, he's doing um, a Where Is My Mind from the Pixies. It not only is an amazing singer, but he does a really incredible take on the song. But I want you to pay attention to the slightest details of everything he's singing, how he works the mic, how when he gets loud, he pulls away, how when he gets quiet, he comes up. But mostly, you'll hear the way he's singing is so um, fluid. It's so fluid. It's not like to this tempo grip where there's this easy tempo to lock in. He's really kind of jumping in and out of there very randomly, yet every single movement, every single articulation in his throat, in his breath, every single thing is supported with what you're hearing. And if he was, he's not claiming that he's not lip syncing, he's just doing his show. And he certainly, if he was lip syncing, he certainly wouldn't need a microphone. He could certainly just lip sync and nobody's going to say anything about it. But it's my belief that he is singing this absolutely live because of all of the cues that I see that match up with what I hear. I hope you enjoy. With your feet in the air, your head on the ground. Try this trick and spin it Then your head will collapse And there's nothing in it And you'll ask yourself Where is my mind? Closer to the mic? Where is my mind? Where is my mind? It's all Backs away. Way out in the water, see it swimming. See how he works the mic? Where is my his own? See how you can hear him getting farther away? Catch that? That little O. Oh. You'll try this trick and spin it. Then your head will collapse. And there's nothing in it, and you'll ask you soon. Where is my mind? Where is my mind? Where is my mind? It's all way out in the water. See it swimming. 
Puddle's Pity Party Show is powered by... Okay. I I love that guy. I just love him. I discovered him singing Holy Diver with Primus on uh, YouTube. And I saw Primus playing Holy Diver. What's this all about? And this guy comes out dressed like a clown singing Holy Diver, sounding nearly identical to Dio. And uh, I was a little uneasy <laughs> with hearing this Dio stuff with this guy dressed like a clown. But I uh, went and searched after him after that video, and I just couldn't get enough. I just binge-watched that guy. He has a really cool thing uh, where he plays uh, War Pigs. He's doing it with a piano. That is definitely lip-synced. There is no uh, microphone in sight. Uh, but most of his videos where you see him standing there with a microphone, uh, that's just him pulling it off live. And he's not claiming that he's doing that. It's just obvious he's doing that. It's clear. It's clear as night and day. The way he pulls from the mic and you hear him getting further, every little nuance of what he sings is so impeccably timed. So there is no way that is lip syncing. And if he was lip syncing, then that guy needs to be doing a course on how to lip sync better than anyone else. But I'm certain that's not the case. And I just wanted to show that to show the difference. And while I'm here, to get this one other thing off my chest is um, another thing that really annoyed me about Ken is when he's listening to somebody sing, even somebody that he likes, particularly somebody that he likes, and that person is singing and then hitting this high note that Ken always has to show that he could sing that high note too, and he kind of sings over what you're listening to. And I'm putting this video out basically to pull my punches a little bit less because I had been criticized for being too kind to him. And I'm not here to come back and be mean or to, you know, bash him when he's down. That's not my intention. My intention is to uh, ride on the wave of all those views I got from the last one. So thank you once again, Ken, for uh, creating this controversy to which uh, people like myself and others could respond. I do want to say there are some other channels out there that are really, really vicious and mean. And um, it must be fun to make these videos that they're making. Some of them made me laugh my ass off, but it was vicious. And that's not my intention here. So I'm looking to see if my comment gets deleted. Uh, right now, we're on the 9th of October, 2024. And um, let's check that. This video is called Holding On. Ken Tamplin, holding on. And uh, let's check to see if this video gets, if this comment gets scrubbed, because it's the only negative one you can, you can see. Whereas on my channel, my previous video, it's almost nothing but negative comments against Ken. Um, nothing but, like all these people are coming out of the word work, people saying that they're not happy with this course, that their voice is worse for it. Now, that's what they say, and you can look down in the comments and see that for yourself. So, that's my video, and hopefully my last uh, piece I'm going to say on the topic. Uh, once again, I hope that Ken can rebound from this. I hope that he can, uh, if he's lying about this, find a way to come clean. So, I said my piece on the subject, probably never to bring it up again, Unless I find that my video got deleted, I might make mention of that. But maybe you can check it for yourself within a few days. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll also see if this video gets copyright claimed because I use some of Ken's music in there. So that's it. That's my piece. You can write your love mail or your hate mail in the comments below. I really appreciate the subs if you guys want to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to get more vocal centric. My channel before was more studio uh, oriented because um, that was where the love was and my passion is music singing and, and I also play guitar I've been a guitarist since I was 12 so I can spot guitar fakery as well um, and I could also spot what was um, authentic about what he was playing just not live with that this video has gone on much longer than I intended it to but I hope that uh, closes any gaps in what I may have left out on my last video, um, uh, answers any 
uh, questions or um, any doubts about me having misspoken. Um, and that's all. So having said all that, I say to you, good day, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.